Hi, this is Ebody X, and welcome to the Candid Frame YouTube channel. I've been away for a while. I was on vacation, and uh, it's taken me a while to just to catch up with work things here. But I'm back to uh, looking at pictures on the Candid Frame Flickr group and uh, providing some critique, some comments, some insight into you know some of the things that I'm seeing in the Flickr group. Uh, first off, just thank you to all of you who've been submitting images uh, to to the site. I'm seeing some really great work. Um, we're not doing any special assignments, at least at, at, at this point, but if you're interested in, in doing something like that, why don't you email me at the info at thecandidframe.com and, and tell me what more you'd like to get from uh, this channel, at least with respect to these uh, videos that I do each week. Now, in taking a look at the photographs this week, I, I started thinking about portraiture. And there are a lot of portraits that are being uh, uploaded to the, to the Flickr group. But I, I started thinking about environmental portraiture. And that's a slightly uh, a sort of a different genre. It's, for me, it's a, it's a portrait that includes, not only includes the environment, but also makes the environment an important part of the photograph. It becomes a, a very important storytelling element of the image. It, it tells us as much about the subject as the subject itself. When we're oftentimes making portraits of people, we're not even considering the background. Or if we are, we're just looking at it in terms of a graphic sensibility, whether it will complement the color of the subject or if we use a very shallow depth of field, will it look nice when it's blurred into this nice bokeh? I'm talking about something else entirely. I'm talking about really being thoughtful about the space that you're photographing your subject in because you want that to reveal something about the subject that wouldn't be seen if they were simply, let's say, uh, posed against a gray or a white background. Uh, so with that in mind, I wanted to take a look at several of the photographs that I pulled that uh, I thought were really good examples uh, of that. Uh, I think this is the first image here. And this was the one that really sort of piqued my interest about the topic. It's an image by Gabriel Gagari. And it looks to be a, a person who um, fixes and repairs shoes. And um, he's pouring himself some tea. And I'm not sure exactly where this image was shot. I get the feeling that it was probably, well, he has a calendar in the back that's in Spanish. So... It uh, likely was in uh, a Latin American country, but here you gotta. Even though he isn't consciously looking at the camera, I consider this a, a portrait here uh, because the figure is a very dominant element in the in the frame here. And even though he's occupied doing something, um, the most important thing here is not so much the gesture or even the tones. It's really about the environment. Take a look at those racks of, of, of shoes and different items that he has there. Look at the tools that are on the table. We get to learn so much about who this person is behind beyond his, his pure physicality that tells us immediately about this person. And uh, I like images like this. When I'm out in the street and I'm making portraits I don't often have a lot of control about where I photograph a subject, but occasionally if I find my way into a space where someone is actually doing something, images like this have the potential to be made. And I think that such images really kind of challenge us as photographers because so much of the time when we include more in the frame than our subjects, there's the potential to include a whole lot of clutter and a whole lot of noise. But in this case, even though the environment is very busy and there's a lot of stuff in there, Almost everything in this frame tells us something about the subject, which makes it a really effective environmental portrait. Here's an image of this gondolier in, uh, in Venice, and it was shot by uh, Angelo Maggi Pinto. And I guess since I've been away, Flickr has made some changes, so things are not where they usually are, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to talk about the... The, the, the photographs, but th here you get a sense of, of place immediately by his costume and his hat and by the different elements we see in the background, we immediately know where we are. We're in, we're in Venice. Uh, there's no place in the world that looks like this. And so here you get a, a portrait where you not only have a sort of an interesting subject, but you also have 
the the building. You have the bridge to the left. You have the waterway uh, slightly behind him. So all of those elements really help to tell us something about where this person is and who he is. Because obviously, from his con- costume, even though we don't see his boat, we know he's a he's a gondolier. So again, all those elements in the frame are helping to tell the story. We have this figure here on the right who's uh, handling the handing the rail. He really doesn't add anything particular to the frame here. Um, so that I wouldn't have wanted if I were making the shot myself. But it's small things like this you know, always have to keep an eye out for. One of the things I really love about this image, even though he has this sort of this classical um, sense about him and and has Venice as a backdrop, you see what looks to be like an iPad crooked in his in his arm, and I think that adds a really nice, nice bit of humor here. And one thing I just noticed here, which is really nice, is that if you look here, you'll see a little mirror, which I guess is used by the gondoliers to help reference what's behind them. It's like a rear view mirror or side view mirror for the gondoliers. And uh, it allows you to see just a little more of the waterway and the buildings that are receding uh, in, in the distance, which I think is really, really cool. Um, this is not an image that I wanted. Here's another photograph that I don't know if it really qualifies technically as an environmental portrait because it looks like it was it was set up, but I, I felt it kind of qualified because those stacks of books that are being made to 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 appear as a chair, I felt helped to tell the story of this person who you know, what seemed to me is really into books. It was made by Linda Sue Kosius. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. If you've been tuning into this channel for any period of time, you know I'm kind of prone to that. But um, this is obviously a really kind of neater exploration in terms of using a light source right behind the book to illuminate him, which, you know, which, which I like. But I'm paying more attention in terms of all the different elements beyond the subject itself that were added here in order to make the shot, you know, make the shot. And in this case, it's these stacks of books that I assume that this guy has um, has read and it's part of his collection. And, and the photographer and he have collaborated to create this book chair and to create this wonderful portrait. And I think it's it's not just there just for the sake of making a chair out of a stack of books it's to me saying something about who this person is and he's a, a voracious reader i get and that he takes a lot of pleasure in not only collecting but reading books and reading stories and i think it's that sort of thoughtful thinking about what am i going to include in in the frame behind my subject that really is an important element of making a good environmental portrait here's an image uh by david miller and uh, it says uh, this it's the title of it is Mare at her bus ticket booth in Macedonia. Uh, I wouldn't think that this was a ticket booth. I had the feeling that it was part of her home. But knowing that it's a ticket booth uh, it strikes me as is very quaint and makes the image that much more interesting to me. But even if I didn't see that. That title what struck me about the image is all the various elements that are within the frame that help to tell her story I may not know immediately when I take a look at this photograph that she's in a booth um, but I start looking at all the different items that are included in the frame because it seems like they were thoughtfully included in the composition when the photographer made the image so I see the the curtain I see the uh, the, the radio with the cassette player I see the calendar and I see her, you know, her dress, and I'm looking at all these pieces, and I'm trying to put them together, and I'm trying to get a sense of like, well, where is she, you know? Um, and I start asking questions, and I think that's always the the best thing about an environmental portrait is that we're not just looking at the subject and going, oh, they're attractive, they're not attractive, they're interesting looking, they're a real character, or, or so on and so forth. We start looking at a photograph as if it was a sort of a mystery novel, where I, at least for me, I start looking for little clues of why the photographer included those things in the frame and what it tells us about the subject. And even though I don't get a whole lot of detail here, uh, and the 
the the description of the image really helps to solidify what the what the photograph is about it's those it's that thoughtful composition that really it tells me that this is an environmental portrait because i think that too easily when we make a, a portrait of someone particularly if it's of a stranger while we're on vacation or just walking around uh it it, it can be easy to just focus on the subject and not consider everything that's in the background. And I think that David here really demonstrated that he was really thoughtful about the things that he included in the composition. Uh, sometimes you don't have to make a, an image this, this um, where the subject is so dominant in the frame in environmental portraiture. Sometimes uh, there are photographs where the setting dominates the frame and the subject is only a very small element of the frame, but nevertheless, it's a portrait because it's, it's about the space and its relationship to the subject. I didn't really have an example that I found in the Flickr group, but um, you know, there are always a, plenty of images that demonstrate that. Here's a shot by Eric Steibel, and uh, it's called Moondog Matinee in San Francisco. And this looks like to be a converted school bus. Um, and he made this portrait of this, of this fellow and I immediately just love the aesthetics of the shot. I mean, the shallow depth of field, it looks like it was probably shot on film. Um, the quality of the light is just, is just wonderful. But again, as soon as I move my eye away from the subject, I start considering the space. I start looking at, okay, where are we exactly? Because this doesn't look to be a room or an apartment. There's evidence you know, from the windows and the design of the, the roof there that we're in a vehicle, but that somehow it's been transformed because we have these shelves, we have this chair, we have this table, uh, what looks like to be a, like a bunk bed on the left-hand side. And again, I'm starting to ask questions. I'm wondering, where are we? Who is this person? And that for me makes it really successful as an environmental portrait. If you look at the shot, all the technical things have been done right in terms of sharpness, in terms of exposure, in terms of color, all, you know, all the things that we kind of expect us as photographers to be able to do effectively from shot to shot. But it's the thoughtfulness of the composition in terms of what Eric decides to include or exclude from the frame that becomes so, so important. It's really easily to include stuff in the frame that we may not not want. Um, I see this red bucket up here in the upper left-hand side, and for me, it's a little bit of a distraction because such saturated colors can really draw our attention, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, might have might have I removed it? Maybe, but you know, it's, it's, it's important to always scan the edges of the frame, whether you're making an environmental portrait or any kind of photograph to be really conscious of what's along the edges of the frame. Because for, at least for me, I usually find that the most distracting elements usually happen at the edges. Now here's the last shot here. Um, and I really love this, this, this photograph of what appears to be this family uh, in, a, in a train yard. And I immediately want to know more about the story here. Um, they're on a train track, and this little cart seems to be some sort of vehicle that they maneuver up and down the tracks. Um, and we obviously are in a rail yard because we can see the rail car here. We see the uh, the lines here on the top. You see, and in the distance, you see the skyscrapers here. Um, and I think it's 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 a wonderful shot because it really piques my interest. Who are these people? Where are we? Uh, do they depend on this vehicle to, in order to, you know, eke out an existence and to survive in the community that they are? I know that in certain uh, Southeast Asian countries that there are these whole communities that have been built around uh, the rail yards and they actually live on there and they are dependent on, on the community that's built around this uh, in order to survive. And I'm wondering, are they part of this or is this something altogether different? But whatever it is, I'm really interested in. I, I love the contrast of of these families, of this family here that's dependent on this sort of makeshift vehicle that runs around this track, and then this sort of modern modern architect architecture in the distance. The, the contrast between of class of of technology, 
it's all spelled out in this photograph, as well as being a really beautiful black and white portrait. The, the light here is really nice. It's even. It's uh, probably an overcast day, but you get great tones when it's converted over to a black and white. And also wonderful use of, you know, all the technical stuff, and especially the shallow depth of field. So um, Freza is the, the photographer who made, uh, who made this image, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful shot. So um, I am glad to be back here uh, to be able to look at images. I'm going to be doing a couple of different things starting next week on the channel, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, keep submitting. Uh, keep submitting photographs. But again, if you have an interest on a particular thing that you'd like me to do with this YouTube channel, please email me at info at thecandidframe.com. And if you're finding us for the first time, uh, and you've not listened to The Candid Frame. The Candid Frame is a podcast I've been producing for the last eight years where I interview photographers from every genre of photography. It's um, really frank, open, sincere conversations about the craft of photography. You're not going to hear a lot of stuff about gear and equipment there. So if that's what you're focused on, you know, there are a lot of other podcasts that uh, will suit your fancy. But if you're really in interested in drawing some inspiration from photography... Well, thecandidframe.com is where you should be. So thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you next time.